Well, I think Orton is terribly important, um, not just because he reintroduced the kind of Wildian wit into the theatre, but he was wanting to absolutely expose the difficult, complex sexuality, which is in all of us. Dionysus was his god, and he was trying to express that. And when I did the play the first time uh, in 1966, I was very young and very naive, and I missed it completely. I didn't get that the two boys were bisexual, having an affair, etc., etc. And therefore, I cast two marvellous but very heterosexual actors who didn't hint at that at all. So that side of the play I totally missed. Um, I realised it much later, and I directed it again about ten years ago at the Royal Exchange with Derek Griffiths playing Truscott, and I think I got it pretty right. But to get all that right so that it isn't just funny, but it actually awakens in the audience a feeling of, oh my God, I recognise that in me, I think is the great challenge of doing it. The Manchester production of Lute in 1966 came about in a very strange way. I was very young, only 22. I had been shot to the top of the profession with a show that had gone into the West End when I was still at Oxford. And um, Michael Codron had been the producer and he phoned me up uh, after, just after I'd left and said that he had mounted this production of Lute by Joe Orton, that it had been a failure on tour it hadn't worked at all. He believed it was a great play. Would I be interested in directing it at Hampstead? And I said, well, I've just agreed to take over what was then called Century Theatre, which was going to be resident in Manchester. And so I couldn't possibly do it, but I would do it there for my new company. And he said, yes, please do. Meet Joe. If he agrees, you got it. And so I read the play, thought it was wonderful, terribly funny, and also anti the police, which I was very happy about at the time. Um, met Joe, um, Baker Street, outside Baker Street Station. We had coffee, he was very sweet, and he said, yes, go ahead and do it. So that's how it all came about. Yes, he rewrote it from three acts to two acts, which was a very important thing. Two intervals would have been far too much for the play. But also, the Lord Chamberlain had cut out various sexual references which they had found too much. And I had had a run-in with the Lord Chamberlain a year or two earlier, a very big run-in, which I had won and got massive publicity. So when I walked into Lieutenant Colonel Eric Penn, his name was, uh, he looked at me and said, oh, not you again, and put all the cuts back in again. So that and the, and the reshaping was what we, we did together, yeah. Well, Joe had been very unhappy with the West End production, the one that failed, because it was heavily stylized, black and white set, etc., etc. What he wanted was a very ordinary room, sitting room, which you would find by opening the door of any middle-class street in England, and that's exactly what we provided him with. As with any comedy stroke farce, because it's on the verge of those two things, the first thing is you have to be absolutely serious. You do not play for laughs. You're going to get laughs, you know you're going to get them, but the first thing in order to make it really work is the audience have to believe in the characters. So the actors have to be absolutely true and absolutely honest emotionally. Then when you've got that, then you tighten it, then you bring it up to speed. The audience should always be running behind you. They should never be ahead of you or even running alongside of you. You've got to be ahead of them all the time. Loot is very tricky and I found that both times because Truscott is so funny, it's very difficult to get the right balance so that he remains frightening as, as well as being funny. I think in the first production where I had a brilliant comedian, it was almost impossible to rehearse because we were laughing all the time. The actors couldn't keep a straight face on stage. Uh, the second time, Derek Griffiths is also a brilliant comic, but I tried very hard to get that, that balance. And it's very hard in Lute, much easier in What the Butler Saw which is pure farce, and so you can do it as pure farce, and you can get both sides of it. Yes, I absolutely do. Um, I am very biased in favour of what the butler saw, because it's based on the back eye, and it seems to me the back eye is a play for our time. It's saying, we have that side of us, let it out. And in, and in what the butler saw, it is let out. And at the end of the play, everybody goes up the ladder into the light. Well, that's kind of wish fulfillment with Joe, who tried to lead his life like that and wanted to educate us like that. And until we've caught up with that message, it'll still be relevant. <laughs>